Flippin' Friday with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft, y'all! Hey, y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use two packs of these five gallon paint stirrers from Home Depot. You get three in a pack for 98 cents. Three of these little dowels from Dollar Tree. Six of these little clamps that I got from Ikea. My four inch table saw from Harbor Freight. Some wood glue. Some Waverly chalk paint. Some twine. Some sandpaper and my sanding block my glue gun and some glue sticks, my heavy duty stapler, and some tools for my work caddy. So the first thing I did was measure off my sticks where I wanted to cut them. For two of them, you want them to be long. And I started off by cutting these just below that curve, but that was a mistake. I end up having to go back and redo this at a later time and make those longer. Now for the other four that's left, I just marked them the length of my ruler, which was about 12 and a half inches. Those are gonna be our cross slats. Now to go back to those long ones, I did end up going back, um, after I tried to lay this out, I saw that those were too short. So I ended up going back and using two more and just cutting an inch and a half off the top of those. But honestly, if I was doing this again, I wouldn't cut them at all. Now I want to make sure that I line this up so I know how long I need those little dowels to be that I'm going to be putting in the center. I want a one inch overhang so I set that up and then I mark my little dowel and I end up cutting two of those at seven and a quarter inches and I cut one of them at seven and a half inches. When I went back and changed the length of my paint stirrer stick I had to have one just a little bit longer. Now I'm just taking all of my wood pieces and using my little table saw to cut them off. Y'all, I love this little table saw. It's the best investment I've ever made. They're only about $36 from Harbor Freight and it cuts through this stuff so easily. Now I want to make sure that my sticks have a rounded off edge. I didn't want them to have that cut edge um, that is so squared off. I want it to look more old and worn out. So I took my sanding block and just kind of roll it around those edges and that kind of just cleans it up and gives it a more worn out look. Now that I have all my wood prepared, I'm going to give it a good coat of paint. You can see up at the top that I actually started out trying to stain these with my antiquing wax, but this wood did not take that wax very well. I didn't like that look, so I just grabbed my Waverly Truffle paint, and I like how this turned out. I gave them all a good coat on the front, the back, and all the sides, and then I also painted my little dowels. Now that everything is dry, we're going to lay this out and start our construction. Again, I want a one inch overhang on, or actually it's about an inch and a quarter overhang on each side of this. So I laid it out and I used the little lines there on my grid mat. This really helped. And you're gonna see in just a minute that this is where I figured out that these were not long enough. I need about four and a half inches in between those slats and I could not get that at all to be able to put three photos in here. So that's when I went back and I recut two more sticks, um, just cutting off an inch and a half off of that top. And I knew that I could make this little slat lay across it and cover where it curves in. Um, but this steel, my bottom one and my top one are four and a half inches apart, but the little opening in the middle is only about four inches apart. Um, so again, I kind of wish I would have not cut these at all, but I didn't want to waste two more sticks. So I just worked with what I had and judged it out so that it would fit in there. Once I got my spacing, I took a pencil and I marked where those little slats go. That way it's going to help me know where to put my glue without having to keep remeasuring. Now I take my dowels and I find where they need to go. I want to put it at the bottom of my little mark because I want it to be just underneath my little slats. Then I put two of my clasp on it 
and I just use a little bit of hot glue to put it in place. This held pretty well with just the hot glue, but I do go back and use my staple gun and put some staples in there to give it extra hold. Now I'm going to use a combination of my wood glue and my hot glue. I put a dab in between where the slat's gonna be. I do mark my slat at that one inch mark. That way it just helps me know how I need to line it up and it's easier to put down so that my glue doesn't dry. And I put down all four of my slats. Now those top three, I put them so they just cover those dowels. Now I'm gonna flip it over and shoot some staples into the back of this. And this is just going to give it extra support so that it doesn't come apart with just the glue. I want to give this some distressing. I didn't want it to look freshly painted. So I took my chippy brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and I just dip my brush into the lid. I wipe it off on that old cloth I got over there and then just kind of go over it and give it some distressing on it. I want it to look old and weathered. Now I want to add a little bit of twine to these corners. This was a last minute addition for me. I wasn't sure that I really wanted to do this, but I liked that it gave it a little more interest. It was kind of plain without it. And by wrapping this twine around here, it also gives it extra strength. This thing's not coming apart. It holds up really well. I just put a dot of glue in the center at the back and then I wrap my twine at an angle three times and then I put another dot of glue and wrap it the other way three times and then secure it with just a little more glue. And I really like how this looked. Now for a hanger for my piece, I decided not to put one on here. I didn't have one readily available and I didn't want to use twine to hang this with. So what I did is just kind of prop it on a nail. It hangs on that top rung and this is not heavy at all. So it didn't really put any pressure on it, but I could also just stand it up on my console if I choose to do it that way too. So if you want to put a hanger on it, you can totally do that. I just chose not to. And there's our completed piece. I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. I love the rustic look of it, and I love that I can change out my photos really easily so that I can watch my family grow. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week, offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a house from the Dollar Tree, some wording I printed off the computer, one of these wooden stickers from Dollar Tree, some glue stick, some Waverly chalk paint in black and white, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I tried to do was remove the back from this little house. It was not having it. <laughs> this thing was put together better than anything I have ever gotten from the Dollar Tree. I used my hair dryer and tried to heat it up. I did everything I could possibly do and I was afraid I was going to break it. So I finally decided it was easier to just work with it the way it was. I set it on my paper and found where I wanted it to be positioned and then I just traced around it. I am cutting it out with my scissors inside the lines, but I did know that it was still going to be too big. So then I just place it inside and kind of run my fingers there around the edge. And that gave me a good cutting line so that I could get this to fit perfectly. Now I'm going to paint my little house. I want the outside to be black and for the inside I am going to use that paper but I do know that I need to paint it as well. So since I couldn't get this apart to make it easier for painting, I just took one of my small paint brushes 
and I just kind of carefully went around the inside. I took my time, did this kind of slowly. Painting can be very therapeutic, um, but I did still get some on that back, and that's fine. I have to paint it anyway, so it was an easy touch up. I did paint inside my frame. I painted those edges, um, the sides of it, and I also painted the back. Now I am just taking some of my white Waverly chalk paint and going to paint the inside of this. I wanted to make sure that I covered up all those little medallions so that they did not show through my paper. I had to be careful with this one too when I was going around those edges. I didn't want to get that white paint back on my black paint. Now I'm going to take one of those little hearts out of that pack from the Dollar Tree and give it a good coat of my black Waverly paint. And then once it was dry, I used one of my little Arteza white gel pens and just gave it a little accent mark in the corner. Now I'm going to take my glue stick and I turned over my paper and gave the back of it a really good coat of this glue stick. And then I'm just going to stick it down into my house. Now you could totally use Mod Podge for this. I just prefer to use the glue stick because it doesn't pucker up as badly as um, Mod Podge does. Then I just take my little heart, put a little bit of glue in it, and put it in the center. And there's our little house. This is such a simple project, but I absolutely love how it turns out. I think it makes a great statement and I love having it as part of my home decor. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use two of these tag signs that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, some wording that I traced out, some wrapping paper, some twine, some chalk paint, some snowflakes left over from Christmas, some caulk, some glitter, some chalk, some 3M spray adhesive, my glue gun and some glue sticks, and some tools from my work caddy. So the first thing I did was cut off those tags and then I went to remove this piece that's on the bottom of this. I am going to be using this for the back of my sign and I like to finish my signs so I didn't want to have that bumped up piece on the back. It was a little bit tricky to get off. I ended up using one of my flat tools to get up under there and then I was able to pop it off and then I just peeled off as much of the paper as I could get off. Now I'm going to flip these over and what was the back is now going to be the front of my sign. I like to use that because it's smooth and it just makes a better surface. So I took my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I gave both of these a really good coat of paint. I did make sure that I got those edges because you'll be able to see those from the side, but I did not worry about painting the back of this because I'm going to be covering it. Now, this only took one coat of paint. That's why I like using chalk paint. Most of the time for these signs, it only takes one coat. Now I'm going to be covering the back of my sign with some of this wrapping paper. I really prefer to use craft paper, but I was out, so I grabbed this wrapping paper. It, The color scheme fits perfectly with my theme, and I cut off a piece, then I lay down my sign. I do put down plastic because this spray adhesive gets everywhere, <laughs> and then I spray it really good with my adhesive. I use 3M, but you can use any kind of spray adhesive. They even sell some at the Dollar Tree. Then I just put my paper down and I rub it really good to get the air bubbles and the wrinkles out and flip it over and use my Zacto knife and trim it up. I love the way this makes my projects look. I tell y'all all the time, I can't stand to have an unfinished back. Now I take my pokey tool and reopen that hole. To transfer my wording to my sign, I take a piece of my chalk and I rub it across the back really well. Now I want to make sure that I cover it all. 
then I just lay it out on my project and I take my pencil and trace around my letters and this transfers it onto my project. This is the same concept that we do when we use a pencil and scribble on the back of our paper and then use it to transfer letters to projects. It's just with a dark project, the pencil doesn't show up and neither does my carbon paper. So when I'm doing a dark project, I like to use chalk and it works exactly the same way. Now I'm just going to use one of these chalk markers that I get from the Dollar Tree and fill in my lettering. Um, this is really the first time I've used one of these in my projects. It's really thick and normally my letters aren't this open so I don't like using it. But it worked really good for this project because these letters are more thick and chunky. I was able to fill them in without getting out of the lines too badly. and. It actually kind of looked like snow once I had finished with this. But you can use anything. You could paint this on. You could use the Arteza gel markers. You could use a paint pen. Um, if you have a cutting machine, you can absolutely use vinyl to do this. It would probably be a lot easier than doing it by hand. I just really like the way this one looked by doing it by hand. Now that my lettering's finished, I lay my tags back out and use some hot glue to glue them together. I did make sure that I had those holes lined up. Now, I didn't like the way this looked laying against each other. The edges were not defined. So I decided to take some of my caulk and I put a little bit on my finger and then I just kind of dab it around those edges. And this looks like it snowed on it. It worked perfectly for this winter project and I really love how it turned out. It defines your edges and it just gives it a little something extra. While my caulk was still wet, I took some of my glitter and went around and gave it a little bit of sparkle. Y'all know I love some sparkle. Now I'm going to take my snowflakes and I figure out where I want them to be. Get me a good layout. And then I just use a little bit of hot glue right there in the center to adhere them to my sign. I cut off a piece of twine and folded it in half and then I just ran it through my two little holes up there and put the ends through that little loop that it makes and tied a knot in the end for a hanger. And there's my sign in its place. I love how this piece turned out. It is so simple but it is so beautiful and sparkly. I don't think the camera does this justice. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday morning. Bye y'all!